Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to build a 3D printer. Now real quick, I wanted to point out that this is not like sponsored. I bought this machine with my own money. I don't have any association with this company. I just wanted you to be able to see how easy it is to assemble a kit like this to have your own 3D printer. Alright, let's get started. There's a bag with everything you need for each stage of building the printer. It also has some aluminum extrusions and all the laser cut wood. I wasn't really crazy about how the laser cut wood looked, so I decided to spray paint it all. This worked pretty well, but did cause some of the joints to be a little tight. You attach the motors to the bottom plate by just putting some screws in through the front, making sure to get the motors oriented the right direction. Each foot is made up of two pieces of wood snapped together with the center piece with screws and nuts along the bottom. The screws and nuts have to be loose so that they can slide down into the slots on the side of the aluminum extrusion. Once you've got them on, just tighten up all the nuts to hold them in place. Each one of these feet snaps into the slots that are cut into the bottom panel. You finally secure them by sliding in a nut into the hole on the side and driving a screw and a washer down from the top. There's four of these per foot. To assemble the carriages, you start with a plastic plate, and then you drive a screw through the holes into the end of these acrylic arms. When you drive the screw in, you're actually creating the threads on the inside of the plastic, so it's a little bit of work, but it holds it really tight. Then you push some longer screws through these holes and add a spacer, a wheel, and a spacer to each one. Add the other plate on the other side, and then attach it with some nuts. Once you've finished all three carriage arms, you attach them to the center platform with the screws just like you did before. Just take your time and make sure that you have the screw going in straight into this plastic because once you've made some threads with the screw, there's no going back. Then you just slide the carriage onto the extrusions by lining up the wheels and the slots. The brackets for the top piece are assembled almost exactly the same way as the ones for the bottom. You snap in some pieces of wood, put in a piece from the front, and then attach it all with some nuts and screws. Do two of these brackets, the third one is different because it holds the extruder. You add limit switches to both of these brackets using some really small screws and nuts. Then add two larger screws and nuts on the outside. This will attach to the frame later. The extruder motor gets a wood plate on the front and the back. Put that aside, we'll come back to that. You screw in the push fit to this piece of wood until it's flush on the other side. Then just snap together a few pieces and you've got the bottom of the extruder. For the top of the extruder, you snap together a few pieces, add a screw, and a spacer. Drive another screw in from one side, and add a washer and a bearing before you drive it all the way through both pieces of wood. Next, use a washer and one of these bolts with a taller head. You want to screw it in, but not all the way. Then do the same for the top piece of the extruder. Screw the top and bottom pieces to the motor, and put a spring in between the two bolts that you left partially unscrewed. This gives the top piece some spring action, like this. Then you slide a hobbed pulley over the shaft of the motor and tighten it with an allen wrench. Then add a limit switch just like you did with the other brackets. At this point, the two pieces of wood around the motor aren't attached to each other. It makes it a little bit harder to mount this to the top of the printer just because these pieces can move. Once you get them lined up, you can snap them in just like the other ones. Then you add the front panel, add the screws and the nuts just like before. Then you flip it over and add screws and nuts loosely that will attach it to the extrusion later. Then you need to add a pulley to the front of each one of these brackets. It's a pulley and a washer with a screw and a nut on the back. You gotta leave this loose because it needs to be able to move up and down later on. Feed the wire for each limit switch through the back of each bracket. Now fit the top down onto the extrusions and tighten the screws on each one of the brackets. The wires from the limit switches can fit inside the slot on the back of each one of the extrusions. Then snap in the controls and the LCD and screw them in from the front side. Then you add a couple more pieces of wood and some screws and nuts to attach it to the body of the printer. I added the brass standoffs at this point, but you can actually wait on that. You'll have to take them off later anyway. To start the electronics, you slide each one of the three sensors into a slot cut into the base. Leave the connector end up near the front where the display is. 
Then plug each one of the motors into the control board. You want to make sure that the plug is facing the right direction and you've got it attached to the right terminal. Then take the extension wire and plug it in. Just leave it loose for a minute. Then connect the sensor wire and the ribbon cable. Connect the other end to the display panel. Then using some screws and standoffs, you're going to mount the control board underneath the printer. Next you'll need to take some time to manage your wiring. Use zip ties to bundle them up and then stuff them in around the motors. Feed the red and black thermistor cable underneath the board and plug it in. Then attach the yellow and black heater wires to the terminal on the side. Set those two wires aside and plug in all three of your limit switches. Once they're all plugged in, clean up the cabling a little bit more with some zip ties. The kit comes with a flexible wire wrap. Go ahead and use that to hold the thermistor and the heater cables together. And that's it for the electronics. I flip the printer back over, and if you were like me and attached the brass standoffs, go ahead and take them off. You're going to have to screw them into these pieces of wood shaped like ovals. Once you've got both of them in, you can put screws up through the bottom of the plate and screw them in. These sensors have an adhesive back, so carefully peel it off and put it right in the center of this pedestal. To attach the hot end, you push it up through the platform and then slide it to the center. That locks it in. Feed your thermistor and heater cables in from the top. You mount the heater with a small Allen wrench. The thermistor just pushes into the hole, but make sure that you get it all the way in. Then use a zip tie to hold these in place. For each one of the three spools, put a nut through the bottom and a screw through the side. Then slide them down over the shafts of the motors and tighten them up. Then at each bottom bracket, add a screw to hold spacers and pulleys. Do this for all three. For each one of the carriages, feed the fishing line through the hole and tie a good knot. Then make a loop, feed it up and over the pulley. Then back down through the carriage through the pulley at the bottom, under the sensor, and then wrap it around the spool five times. Come off the spool and go back the same path on the opposite side. The trick to all this is just keeping it really tight. You can use some scotch tape to hold it in place while you weave it through. Once you get it back to the carriage, tie another knot, but don't worry too much about getting it too tight at this point. You can raise and lower the pulley at the top to get the correct tension. Once you've finished all three, the last thing is to hide the wire from the extruder. The easiest way I found to do this was to push it into the slot on the back side of the printer. I used some scotch tape just to hold it in place because there's so many wires. Then just connect it to the extension cable that comes out of the bottom. Lay on the acrylic base and you just made a 3D printer. Now even though you may not get this same machine, I wanted you to see how easy it is to put together a 3D printer from a kit. All you need is a screwdriver and some needle nose pliers. Now this style of machine is called the Delta style because of the way this is all configured, but you also have the more traditional XYZ Cartesian type of printer. Between both of those types, there's a lot of printers that are coming out right now in this price range. This was about $500 when I backed it on Kickstarter. One thing that's really unique about this particular printer is the huge build area. The area that it can print something is really large relative to the cost of this machine. Now I don't have any experience with 3D printing so this is all very new to me and I will hopefully share with you as I learn about the software and about the actual printing specifics. If you've got experience with 3D printing please share those tips in the comments below or at iliketomakestuff.com or on my Facebook page. That'll help me and the other people watching learn more about 3D printing. If you like this one please let me know in the comments down below. I'll have a new project video coming up next and I've got a lot of other stuff for you to check out here. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.